right on. Here we are looking at the H bridge of the servo systems DC drive card. Now down here looking into the large connector labeled A on the board we have uh, pins 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Now I might have that backwards it could be 1 over here and 10 over here but I labeled it 1 through 10 reading left to right. So the motor 7, 8, 9, and 10 is right here. 7, 8, 9, and 10. So armature 1 and armature 2 would connect to these pins right here. The positive side of the DC bus on 5 and 6 right here. The ground of that uh, external power supply on 1 and 2 right there. Now the way this works is we would be PWMing the bases of these driver transistors. And if we want the motor to move in one direction or the other direction, say for instance we turn on Q4, we PWM Q4, and we PWM Q2 leaving Q1 and Q3 off, turned off, and current would flow through this transistor, Q4, through the motor, through Q2, to ground in this fashion, causing the DC to motor to run in one direction. If we wanted to move in the opposite direction, we would turn Q4 and Q2 off, and we would pulse width modulate Q1 and Q3. And so now current flows from the 24 volt DC power supply through Q1, through the motor in this direction. Notice it's in the opposite direction, current flow in the opposite direction, through Q3 back to bus ground. So we either go in this manner or this manner. That's how direction is determined by which two transistors are turned on and turned off. Let's take a look at the next page. On this sheet is how the control voltages to the control board and the firing circuits are generated. Now I placed uh, an external power supply. You see we have two bridge rectifiers going to two 7815 uh, voltage regulators, three terminal voltage regulators. I placed an external power supply positive on 10 and ground on 12, that's 10A and 12E of the smaller connector, the B, labeled B on the board, and I increased that voltage until I had a good 15 volt DC right here. I did the same down here on pins 9A and 11A. A second external power supply. I increased that voltage until I had a good plus 15 volts out here. So two power supplies. One on 10A positive and ground on 12A. The second power supply on 9A I applied to positive voltage right here and the ground on 11A. And it turns out that at about 18 volts DC I went ahead and took it up to 20 volts or I'm sorry 24 volts DC so I'd have good solid regulation out here but at about 18 volts DC here and here I had 15 volts out here and 15 volts out here. Now I wasn't worried about the Zener voltage right here that's going back out the same small connector labeled B and uh, the same down here we had another Zener voltage going out here on B. I wasn't worried about that. 
if you wanted to, you could measure uh, your zener voltage out here, but I wasn't worried about it. I tested these zeners with my uh, DMM set to diode test mode, and they were not shorted, and the resistors were not open, so I called that good. Up here, now you'll see this ground everywhere. I had it on 8A and 8C. That's this ground right here. And also, I think uh, uh, 24A and 24C. Um, I might be wrong. We'll get there in a minute. And uh, 25A and 26C maybe. But this ground is all over that uh, small connector on uh, label B on the power board. Let's go to the next page. Here we're starting to get into the controls that make that motor run. Now I made a mistake in the last uh, page. I said that 25A and 25C was ground. But no, no of course, i got to make a mistake every now and then. It's uh, 24A and 24C and 26A and 26B are the ground. <laughs> so, scratch that 25A and 25C being ground. That was incorrect. <laughs> so, here we have optocoupler number 3. It's an MCT2E. And, you notice that I don't uh, show the destinations of these uh, circuits right here. All I'm worried about when I'm trying to figure out how to make something go is to determine whether it's an input here and here or an output such as that Zener circuit we saw back there. The inputs are more a concern when trying to get things up and going. So here this optocoupler circuit is the enable. How did you figure that out? Well I had to experiment. Uh, by driving into this optocoupler with a, vo a DC voltage to see what happens. Um, so here on 25A and 25C we have the enable input that gets that drive going. We go through a 1.2 kilo ohm resistor uh, and I applied, let me back up a little bit, I applied 12 volts DC to this circuit right here. Uh, in its ground. So I had 12 volts DC from an external power supply that I turned on to make that motor run. Uh, current flows through the 1.2 kilo ohm resistor through the anode cathode junction emitting photons into the uh, transistor, the phototransistor on the output side. Here, this is a nice thing about this drive is there's an LED in the cathode circuit. So your current flows through the resistor, through the uh, LED inside the optocoupler, through the anode cathode junction right here, back to ground, back to that 12 volt ground. And that LED turned on, indicating that you were enabled. So if I saw that LED 5, that green LED on, I knew we were running. Uh, again, not worried about where this goes, just that if I enabled that input and that motor ran, I knew that was the enable. Cool. Now, the speed reference. We have two inputs. I ignored this third input. Not sure why that was there, but it was jumped on the board. The little jumper. And these two inputs were jumped together, so... I could treat either one as, an, as a, the inverting input, or the non-inverting input, I'm sorry. So I connected a, a potentiometer right here, the wiper going into 21A, and the wings of that wiper connected to plus or minus 10 volts DC. An external power supply, a second one. <laughs> well, actually, how many have we got now? Let's see, two to power up the DC circuits, one for the enable, one for the speed run. There's four already. <laughs> so the ground of, uh, of this input right here, I tied back to 
the uh, plus or minus 10 volt power supply that was speed that was uh, uh, connected to that potentiometer and then we were able to run based on whether this was positive input uh, or negative input depending on where I turn that pot the DC motor would run uh, clockwise or counterclockwise now let's take a look at the next circuit here are the direction inputs one direction on 27A and 27C and the other direction on 29A and 29C so let's call this one clockwise and that one counterclockwise here are the grounds I was talking about on 24A, 24C, 26A and 26C we have two optocoupler inputs with 4.7 kilo ohm current limiting resistors so I used an input of plus 24 volts DC from another external power supply on either 27A or 29A reference to these grounds. Again, when I apply 27 or 24 volts DC to pin 27A or 27C, whichever is more convenient for you, current flows through the 4.7 kilo ohm current limiting resistor through the anode cathode junction of the LED inside that optocoupler now we have two different part numbers again they're CNY17-2 the current flows through that LED and through another green LED in it to indicate that this optocoupler is being turned on so current flows through the anode cathode junction to ground of that green LED same up here this circuit is identical to this one the difference is being which input is being activated by that 24 volts DC applied to 27A or 29A let's take a look at the next circuit Here are the clockwise and counterclockwise limit inputs. Now I know they're limits because if I did not energize this 24 volt DC relay coil closing the contacts to allow that circuit, the clockwise or counterclockwise circuits to be made to uh, activate if I did not make these inputs then the direction uh, inputs that we saw in the last page did not activate so when I made this 24 volt DC reference to that ground applying 24 volts DC to 16A or 16C energizing that relay and applying 24 volts DC to 17A or 17C and that external power supply reference to that ground energizing these relays closing the contacts I was able to move that DC motor clockwise or counterclockwise when I made the direction inputs to those optocouplers in the last circuit we looked at so I know these are limits clockwise and counterclockwise what are those limits used for well let's say you have a table moving in and out based on which way that DC motor is rotating if we hit a limit switch that opens up disables disconnects that 24 volts DC from this relay coil right here when we hit that limit switch and open up that circuit that motor stops let's say you had a table moving in one direction or the other and you don't want it to go that far uh, it could damage the machine if, if that uh, motor pushed that table past that limit switch so when it hits that limit switch and opens up the circuit uh, 
that motor stops. How many more pages we got? That's it. But we're not done yet because we have to look at the simplified connections that I have drawn out. Based upon these drawings that I have shown you so far. All right. Let me make some room for the camera to see if we can get this uh, in the frame. Give me a minute. Now to power up the controls and the firing channels, I brought this first power supply, number four, of plus 24 volts DC. I had it set to plus 24 volts DC. Attached to pin 9A or 9C if you wanted to and ground of that same power supply to 11A or 11C on the B connector. And that powered up that first 7815 three terminal voltage regulator. To power up the second one, I brought a second power supply, power supply number five, set to the same plus 24 volts DC into pin 10A or 10C and ground on 12A or 12C and that powered up the controls and the firing channels. Down here the A connector we had to power up the H bridge and I used plus 24 volts DC again this is power supply number six plus 24 volts DC attached to pin five and this was plus bus of the H bridge and bus ground of the H bridge tied to that same power supply. Now the motor armature one connected to pin seven and armature two of that DC motor connected to pin nine. Let's take a peek at the next page. Here's my external connections into connector B to control that DC motor. Now I had a 12 volts DC power supply, this power supply number one, connected to pin 25A or 25C and that is our enable input. So when I turned on this supply that motor got up and ran as we saw in the video. Power supply number two for the speed reference. I had it set to plus or minus 10 volts DC and it's ground. The wiper of this potentiometer, I had a 5 kilo ohm potentiometer, the wiper going to 21A or 21C and it's ground going to 22A or 22C, whichever is more convenient to clip onto. The clockwise and counterclockwise inputs, either one switched, but not both at the same time, just one or the other. So if I wanted to run clockwise, I would apply from power supply number three, 24 volts DC through the closed switch into 27A or 27C. And uh, the switch to 29A or 29C counterclockwise would be open. Now to run in the other direction we would open up clockwise and close counterclockwise. Here are the limits on 16A or 16C and 17A or 17C. And I have those just jumped up to that uh, power supply number three plus 24 volts DC. But in your machine you may want to have a limit to prevent that table from moving too far, moving past the limit. You might have want to normally close switch here and when the table hits that switch opens up that circuit and stops that uh, motor from running any farther. Same down here. Normally close switch. And here we used 26A for our ground up here. That's it.
We've made it to the end. Unbelievable. <laughs> All right. All right. It's starting to get dark outside. I got to run outside and take care of the birds, fill up their feeders. And, and uh, I planted some cilantro. Oh, I got to put that video up. I think I'll put that video up with this one. I planted some cilantro and uh, uh, took care of my daughter's chives. She has some chives growing back here. She's had growing for many, many years now. So we ain't done working yet. We'll see you next time.